Yeah. Simji, you know what I'm about. Thank you guys for joining me today. Give everyone to join the room. If you're catching this on a replay, I appreciate you. Let's get a pop out chat. Let's see what's going on. Good top of the afternoon to you guys. Should be pouring in from work, school. It's a Friday, beautiful Friday. Won't take a lot of your time. Let's get this right. Hey, Kaibin. What are we talking about today? Hey, <laughs> what's good, Toots and Beats? LeVar Bennett, what's good, everybody? Um, I'm just talking like I be talking. You know how it go. I'm um, checking out some of the comments. I'm um, checking out some of the waves. I know I've been getting some Twitter love and people have questions for me, so I'm waiting for some of these folks to jump in the chat so I can answer that. I'll be revisiting the cycle kit, more importantly, the repository, and trying my best to address the NPC memory issue. Because as I understand it, it only has two gigabytes of RAM. And when you deal with multi-samples, such as this particular library, you're going to run out of RAM really fast. So you got to be able to do something about that in order to get a full experience. So I'll attempt to explain that for all of my NPC heads or future NPC heads and just make something in general. I think that sounds pretty cool. So we're going to see what's going on. <clears throat> People are like, yeah, bang it. <laughs> okay, but anyway, <laughs> good grief was good. J Beats and Waves was good. Local folks was good. Terry B. A. Lester Terry. A. Good grief said winter break about to be over. I won't be able to tune into the lives. SMH. A fam, I respect it. Catch us on the rebound, on the replay, man, or, you know, catch me on the weekend. You know, I can do lives on the weekend. Y'all just got to let me know what times work. JY got beat. Save him. Bentino, happy Friday. Get yourself a bottle of Henny. Order a piece of breadsticks. All that's going to turn into glucose, man. I don't need no more sugar. I'm actually trying to get off of that, that bread wave more than anything. Stefan, what's good? BK Banga. Hey. Bro, finally did a live stream while I'm off of work. <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. Sicario. Trey B, what's good? Cheese Staker. Hey. Colin New, UK calling, like button pressing. I respect it. Thank you, fam. So, um, let's start with this Masada kit. Let's approach the repository real quick, just in case you missed that last live stream when I use it for the first time, and I work my way through the different frustrations because I realized this box does have a memory problem. And this is something not for nothing. My brother Curtis, he has adopted the name tag as a contrarian, recently has disbanded the idea of being a contrarian. But uh, he brought this up and I thought it was very uh, important. I'm gonna see if I can find it. Here he is. He he's goes by Water Make Beats. Mm. There he goes, we're getting close. We're getting close before we got to the genre question. He was talking about standalone mode. I got you, I got you. Where are you, Curtis? So many people interact with me that it's mind boggling. So sorry if I don't get back to a lot of you guys. It's because a lot happens just on just on this social media site, let alone Instagram and email. Boom, there it is. <clears throat> so on the topic of computer versus standalone is an interesting one. Think about all the CPU and developers. They always want to push the boundaries, basically of the chipset or the, or the format or the operating system, whatever. But even more the case, developers use the extra CPU and RAM capabilities to be lazy and write quick, sloppy, sub-optimized code. And then he went in deep about it, about how can you get a new, a close to zero latency workflow or a speedy workflow in the box in your computer without having to, I'm assuming, invest in an NPC or old school standalone hardware units. And how would you optimize that on the computer? How would you know? Would you trade Omnisphere and Serum for something else, et cetera, et cetera. And it made me think a lot. Because not for nothing, back when I started with hardware, like getting heavy into Cubase and Motifrax and stuff like that, the biggest point was 
um, the sound, how the sound sounded. But the second point was, how can you use them and not have those crazy clicks and pops we used to have before ASIO for All came about? Because we didn't always have ASIO for All. Um, I was lucky enough to have the Emu ASIO driver when the 1212M came out. But if you didn't have that and you're just using a regular Windows computer, every VST plugin was trash. Only because after two, three, four of them, your computer will bug out. And you'll notice that now if you just take that ASIO driver off. So how come that's ever been optimized? How come we're on i7s? How come we are on 4.8 gigahertz chips? And no matter what, you know, one or two plugins will kill everything. And that's because of L2 cache, the fa how fast your computer could process an algorithm and read and write at the same time. They've never fixed that problem. And they probably never will. So what is the magic with the box? And that's what he's asking. Why is this different then? Because if you put Serum or Omnisphere in MPC Live, if you could, inherently it's just a laptop or a computer in a chip. It'll do the same thing. Absolutely right. That's why DSP chips are so attractive. UAD does very well in the DSP market. That's why they do it. They offload that off your computer so you don't experience that. But they haven't put Omnisphere on UAD yet. Why? Same thing with this box. If you load certain kits that take up too much memory, you have the same problem you would have on a computer. So the blind test is, if you're worrying about speed, latency, and efficiency, is it is fast because of its apparent limitation. So you can only load certain types of things and do certain types of moves. I'm wholeheartedly impressed, and this is one of the um, impressed, and one of the questions I got was, yo, did you ever check out the, uh, the air instruments on this? Yes, love it. And they were smart. They said, hey, we only made three, and you can only use eight at a time. The end. Um, when I got Studio One on this new computer, the first thing I did was open up every VSC and play them all at once. <laughs> I think I got up to 16 to 24 tracks without popping. But I can't do that several times on several parts of the beat, and that's what really matters. So if you do get an MPC or standalone device, you're only working with wave samples. So you're only at the mercy of your drive. So since the last time I had the Masada kit, I was going off of, of 80 megabytes per second thumbstick. Now I'm on a 800 megabytes per second internal hard drive. And with that, I can load and read waves faster. But that does not necessarily mean it's faster than my computer. It's just faster at my computer loading waves. <laughs> it cannot load Omnisphere. So what I love about the repository and what may be tricky about the repository is that it creates its information out of waves. And he deep sampled everything. He multi-sampled everything so it changes with your velocity and there's mod wheel modulations and things. So sometimes when I open up a piano on this, it takes up over half of my memory. That's the problem I wanna solve for you in case you think about joining this particular workflow. So let's get it. <clears throat> if, if at any point y'all can't hear me because the sound driver bugs out, um, please let me know at me so it turns orange so I can see it. BK Bango is pretty good about doing that. I appreciate that. Because sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I don't see it. Boom. So we got that. Just out of curiosity, how much of the family is with us today? 50 of y'all. Hey. On a Friday afternoon, I can't complain. What's good, Stefan? Eric Gross... Gross... Twick. Gross Twick. I just call you Eric. What's good, Eric? BHF, what's up, my brother? This expansion is fucking fire, but it's kind of hard to use a standalone. Hey, hey, yes, sir. Let's let's see if I can figure it out. CMPs in the building, what's good? Trey B Studios, good topic. I thought it was the L3 cache was for. Yeah, L3, L2, L4 cache, there's an L and a number, but that cache is what helps us process multiple instruments and plugins at a time. And most of your computers, no matter what processor they sell you, the motherboard's cache is trash. MG the Whistleblower. <laughs> y'all haven't seen anything yet. Have y'all heard about the Akai PC AWOL? We're in NBC Live at the moment, fam. If you have unlimited memory, you inherently end up with latency. That's the way a computer works, I think. Bentino. Yes, sir. Boom. 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 Okay. So, I don't know if y'all can see it. Hopefully y'all can, but I'm in the directory of this particular pack from the cyclekit.com, the repository. He's created 100 presets for us, multi-sampled. Think of it like a contact instrument. Um, sometimes it'll keep loading, like mine's is still loading to get all 100 presets sorted. 
but I'm going to try to go through here and just pick an EP or something. I'm just going to play some really basic chords. I'm not trying to wow you with my beautiful Brian Michael Cox touch. Not this time. Pause. So I hit the insert button. You're going to see my screen loading. It's loading all those different samples. And these are all different velocity switches. It's taking a while, right? So what you're going to have to do is figure out what your favorite ones are. And I'm glad he made previews for all of them, because if you had to do this blindly and then change it and go blind, you'd go crazy. So he has a demo for every sound, so you know exactly what the texture is. <laughs> but it's running through it. It's just a hundred, hundreds of samples per patch. <laughs> We're almost done though. What are y'all saying in the chat? Let me. Da -da -da, da -da -da. What's good, Trevor Bailey? Greg Johnson, thank you for putting us up to speed. Hey, fam. Elton, do you have a series on sound design? Elton, what is a series, my friend? Do I have a sound design playlist, maybe? No, not, not in particular. Um, if you catch me slipping, I'll do it. Boom. So I ran into my first problem. This particular patch maxed out my memory. I don't know if you can see it, but this third bar is how much RAM the MPC Live has. So it filled up to 100%, meaning I can play the sound, for instance. Let me assign it to a key group. Actually, let me do now. So when it runs out of RAM or memory like that, you can't add nothing else to it. And this is what my workaround is for. Let me go to expansion, the repository, bong bong. I'm gonna do that one more time and then answer those questions in the chat. I think I opened it up on my existing project. <laughs> I'm a genius. Uh, <laughs> These are all beautiful, by the way. The sounds are. I'll let that one load. They had a dope battle. A bit heavy on the standalone version. AWOL, my bad, MG. Local folks, whistleblower. Pause, local folks. But yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll discuss more about that particular topic, AWOL and JY Got Beats. I do plan on addressing in which you guys are getting at, but I didn't want my words connect mine to go off and spill all the beans. I'll wait until this weekend. I'm going to have a particular show about what we think that is, what it's about, what it's not about, what it would be capable of, what it'd be killing, what it wouldn't be killing. I already have it all mapped out, words connect, words connect. <clears throat> Hopefully me and CMP can tackle that particular subject. That's why I didn't want to get into that right now. But anyway, we got life, baby. How come your image is not loaded? Mine do load, except for on this particular folder, likely because I have to go into my internal drive and uh, change the root level of the JPEG. What's good, sweet E? MGB having the dopest background images for desktop. Hey, you got to. Trevor Bailey says, what are we hacking today? Good question, fam. We are hacking the memory on the MPC Live. So my memory is the third bar. I'm at 50% or better with one patch loaded from this particular kit. But it's at the expense of it sounding expressive. That's on a Kai Mini. Shit's fire, right? So <laughs> by the time you record that, you're like, yo, I want to add a piano and a bass line and I can't. Bong, trash. So we're going to try to alleviate the trash, the struggle trash phase of this pro process if you work in standalone. And this is very important. The experience with this kit in the VSC version on your computer with the prowess of your unlimited memory. I think I'm at like 40 gigs on my computer, right? 
you won't have this problem as fast. But on standalone mode, you take this outside, picnic table, performance, show, things like this, car ride, whatever, airplane, you would want to know how to keep going and keep adding tracks. So let me find a tempo that I like. Let's turn our metronome on. I can never hear that metronome. And I'm going to have a little bit of latency because my headphones are plugged into my sound card. Trash. But let's do it. I got it on two bars. I might do four bars. I might do a whole freaking sequence. That's just how, how crazy I am these days. SIL Rogue Note. There she is. Oh, no, no. So, my problem is going to be. Memories halfway blown. I'm going to want another one. So what I have been doing or experimenting with is just resampling it. But if I'm going to resample it, I might as well add some sauce. So in case of a lo-fi producer, you're familiar with uh, resampling and things like that because we have to do that on a SP404. In this particular situation, he has a reverb on this already. So if I wanted to, I add additional effects to that string if you're premeditative about your creation process. So me, I might be interested in lo-fiing it, right? These chords probably aren't perfect for the lo-fi wave, but for the sake of demonstration, let's put that lo-fi ring on it, right? So that's the joint. That's the uh, SP-1200 ring. And you could do that on your samples, your drums, your breaks. And then I'm going to go into the menu. I'm going to go to Sampler. And this has a really useful function. This listens to itself, sort of like some of your DAWs do. So normally when you record, you're thinking about vinyl or the various inputs that this has. Like you plug up your record player, whatever, you can record. But you can do resample. And you can just resample left or resample right. And a lot of people exploit the left and right for mono channels. But um, I'm going to do resample left plus right, which is the stereo going through this thing. And as it's playing, you'll see your level. So all I got to do is catch my four bars or eight bars, depending on how much of that string I need. Admittedly, you're committing to this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to record it for that duration, that chord progression. If I'm lucky, I'm going to remember it. And then I'm going to remove that instance and purge it from my memory. So effectively, what I have is that progression with that sound <clears throat> taking up very little memory because it's only occupying um, eight seconds of a waveform, which is similar to a drum kit or a drum break. Very effective. So I'm going to hit arm. Arm is waiting for this to hear something, reach a threshold. All I got to do is re-trig it. Some people have different ways of slicing as they go. I don't need to slice it. I just need it to play the whole four bars. Loop. It got me. Hopefully it stopped because I didn't tell it to stop. <laughs> so I'm going to call that string progression or string prog. It's giving me the option to set it to a program. I'm going to set it to a new program and I'm going to assign it to a pad off rip. This pad down here, I'm going to add an event for it. It's going to make a note for it. And then I'm going to hit keep. Fingers crossed it actually did that. It cut me off. Why you cut me off, son? Dun, 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 sampler. Max length. Oh, it had max length on. I don't need max length. Pause. 
Let's do one more. Discard it. It's not even playing my old drink no more. I broke it somewhere. Discard. I know what I did. When it switched to program and then go back to the keyboard. No, it's not the sample length. It's uh, I was resampling my resample, which was cut short initially. I got it. I didn't switch it back to keyboard. So string probe or string progression. I won't finish spelling it so I can delete the other one. Whoa. Now I can set it to a program. Let's assign it to pad one, replace that old one. Let's keep it. Let's check out the data. It switched it out of the key group. It's got MIDI data, but it delayed my input. That's trash, I don't need that. So I can erase this or start a new sequence. I think I'm just gonna go to a new sequence. I'm gonna use sequence one as my naked, uh, my naked stage or what I used to do back in the day is like uh, if I'm reusing my motif rack, I have one MIDI out for it and I'll keep MIDI out copies of every patch name. So sequence one is gonna be that for me. So this sequence doesn't have anything on it. Let's go to the next one. Make sure our tempo is the same. That tempo was 88 beats per minute. My program, make sure I have a track. Make sure I have an extra track and a program set. And on this program, this track, I'll call it strings. So I know what it is. And on this track where I'm putting my strings, I'm gonna set that, make sure my pads assigned to it or my samples assigned to my pad here. Go to my menu, go to my program edit, set it to mono so it retrigs itself or cuts itself off when it loops. And that's all I needed to do. Record, catch the first note, I'm lit. Catch the first note. Take my metronome off. Did you catch me? You didn't. So I got the perfect loop. I don't have the velocity right. I should have did max velocity on that. But I'm fine with that. So now that I have that, now I can go back to my first sequence where it's taking up all my memory. Go to the key group where this movie string is. And then I can delete it. Are you sure? Yes. Check my memory on my MPC. It's still there, so I'm going to have to purge it. I'm going to purge unused samples. Because I recorded a sequence with my resample, I should be lit. Now I'm using nothing. It's like this much. Go back to my second sequence where I recorded or dubbed that, and it's still there. Now from there, I can manipulate it. Another thing that takes a lot of memory, because the brother was saying about the static, and stuff like that, or the clicks and pops and stuff. Um, 
you're going to notice that when you start doing auto chops and stuff or time warping or anything with pitch on standalone it uses all of the cpu to do that so if you're really in your lo-fi bag or resample bag or kanye bag and you like to chipmunk every single sample you're going to be using a lot of processing power so i what i think is that this is more like the sp404 than i thought it was if you do a chipmunk filter or effect to your samples make sure like this case i want to like turn the semitone down so we get that sp1200 effect but in doing that i'm going to want to resample that again so i get even more processing power if that makes sense to you just doing time strips warps and pitching uses memory and these kind of things just like it does in your computer so what's very interesting about that is that that's why ableton live is so cranky because ableton live is made for warping so you'll be warping samples and putting things in sync in time you don't even know has a little checkbox for warp on and then you wonder why you're running out of CPU. Because for whatever reason, real-time processing of time adjustments is a CPU killer. It's a read and write killer or whatever the, the coding language is for it. So be conscious of that. So if you want the lowest CPU performance on this thing, work with samples. If you want the lowest CPU performance on your computer, bounce your stretches and warps in place to new audio clips in the final pitch or tempo. This way you can get all your CPU back. And then that's for your effects or mixing process. So that's that on that. Yeah, it's using 2% CPU. So theoretically, I do that 25 more times, I'm at 50% CPU. You're likely not going to do it 16 more times, so you're good. So that's my on-the-road thought with this particular Masada standalone kit. Now, if you're using the MPC plugin and you're in your computer, you can run through these patches and not have a problem. Fact. So the next thing I want to do, because the brother asks, well, outside of that, what about the other things? So I'm going to go to a new sequence. Nothing should be playing. And they're talking about the plugins. How good are they for standalone mode? Well, there's only three. There's a baseline synth, mono synth type plugin by Air, an electric synth, which is kind of like a pad and key generator, and then a tube synth, which is also more pads, more polys, more plugs. Basically, it's a polyphonic version of their baseline. So if you ever had like Vacuum Pro or Hybrid or those kind of guys, it's the same thing dumbed down into this particular code. But dumbed down doesn't mean it sounds bad. Stay woke. So I select that. I'll show you the CPU on that. I'm only at 3% still with it instantiated. I'm going to use a pad sound that uses a lot of keys because the more keys you press at once, the more voices you use, the more processing something has to do. And you're on the go, so you need to know what the limits are. try something like that. Let's change this tempo. I like the 80s lately. So I'm at 22% CPU. So that's a different problem. The Masada kit or anything resampled because the software allows you to sample your plugins basically, like via your favorite piano on Omnisphere, you can sample it yourself and use it. Um, that's a memory problem because you're loading a lot of waves for the key group. These VSTs are a CPU problem because that's the process each of these voices in real time. So when it's idle, it's 2%. When I play it, boom, 25%, 24%. Meaning if I'm using three, 75%, eight, eight, uh, you know, 80%. And then you start running into that discomfort of crackling and popping, which bro was saying, like, I don't want to deal with that in standalone. So theoretically, same thing. Hit OK. I got my chords down, whatever. Go to the sampler, resample LR, arm it, record it. Go 
go to a new sequence so it doesn't overdub the actual writing. So sequence four. Let me see if I can get my sample. New program, I think it's program two. And then you record the first note of that, or more logically, you can just double click and draw it. It's gonna be on A01. And if you can zoom in a little bit, all you gotta do is put that first note there. You got it. Make sure your tempos match. My new clips keep changing tempo, which is fine. I'm not gonna complain. And it seems to cut itself off. I think it's in retrick mode. Me, I get special about it. I go to program edit and make sure that that new program is also mono when you start adjusting, especially the tempos and things like that. But that's pretty much it. This way you obliterate the CPU usage from the standalone synths and then you obliterate the memory usage that you're gonna get from your sampled key groups. No matter what the problem is, we still have the same cost to pay on these type of units. The benefit is it's standalone. That's the cool thing. The cool thing is, all right, it makes more sense because you can pick this up and go. But when you're in front of your computer, that'll frustrate you. And that's why people favor the VST or the X model to stand in front of a powerful computer and then they open up the plugin and they don't have none of those problems. So just that's food for thought for any of you considering getting one of these. Um, when you try to bring the future to a classic workflow, you're also inheriting the karma, AKA the futuristic problems that all other setups have. So for me, me and mine, love the Masada kit, going to use it for my compositions. But until I do, until I do, I'm just in my bag. Like, can't tell me nothing. Like, seriously. I'm just going to be. <laughs> Donde esa es ustedes? I'll be a hundred tight beats away until then. Yeah, all these are made with little friction. Very, very little friction, if any. And I know from a lo-fi perspective, because most people who are gonna get this gonna be making lo-fi stuff or loop-based music. When you're working with a lot of loops, um, say for instance from Splice or something, you're gonna wanna know how to do this for various reasons. To be continued. Yeah. <laughs> Showtime Jones. What's wrong, Showtime? <laughs> what did I leave off in the chat though? Hey. Sweet to E. Vintage Blaze. Just a tip. If you stand alone, your internal memory gets used quickly. Yeah. AMG, I got a lo-fi tip in FL Studio. Take a chord progression, apply a picture. Voila, it's a nice start. Yeah, in the MPC, they have something similar. You use the LFOs per pad and you modulate, not modulate, you can modulate it, or you can just adjust a different rate of the LFO per pad and you get the drift. It's dead simple in this. In fact, it's making me like, yo, what I got to use SP404 again for? Because you get the SP1200 ring, you got that sound. That comes from the old MPC too, or the 12 bit samplers, I should say. And then you have time stretch or the pitch drift from changing tuning. Um, the tape effect you can do in mastering, I guess. They don't have a tape effect on this yet. I suspect they will, though. I suspect they will add a reel or wheel type of effect. And then that would be it. This will be a, the lo fi king, I think. You need to fix that. <laughs> the JPEGs use a lot of memory. How do you delete the JPEG? Uh, in your folder structure. Yo, I'm looking for a new laptop. Y'all got any recommendations? I'm trying to stay under a thousand. Trevor Bailey. No, there is no great laptop under a thousand dollars for the same reasons. When you buy anything, a mobile processor, like that's the dummy mission about iMacs. iMacs are laptops. Uh, Mac minis, iMacs, for a long time, Apple's been using laptop processors and motherboards. 
with their own thing. That's why next year they're not dealing with Intel no more. They're probably going to take their chipset from the phones and iPads or the iPad Pro series and make iMac off of that in a more powerful, robust way. The biggest problem that they have with shrinking things, it takes more power. And if it takes more power, it uses more heat. And the way that we use computers, they're on all day. Your, your damn house will catch fire with the kind of chips they have. So once they solve that cooling real-time issue, um, the problem you have with minimizing things is bang for buck. So if you minimize a powerful chip that uses a lot of heat or needs to be plugged into a wall, and then you're asking, hey, I want that same power and I want that same type of performance on battery, lithium of all things, be different if they put the Tesla batteries in it or better or equivalent, but they don't. So every component trickles down and gets and get the power supply, everything. So when you buy a laptop for music production, you're asking for trouble because of the power supply issue and then the clock issue and all of that. And then the L2 cache, they damn near neglect it. That's why so many people were upset about the new MacBook Pros. It was like after 2011, Apple started skating backwards a little bit on how they spec these things. Me being on the tech support end of that is because of the overheating issue. <laughs> you know, the Samsung batteries are catching phones on fire and stuff. People don't realize that. Like, yeah, just because you can render a 3D animation in 30 seconds doesn't mean you should do that every hour of your day. Because there's a cost, no matter what, even if you can't see it. So if you want a decent computer, laptop or not, or whatever, I think your question is more about what do I need to run my programs efficiently? I'm on the spec side. Um, you're looking at your clock speed, so your processor. Not how many processors you have, how fast is one processor? So I would go for 4.2 gigahertz. You're not going to find that in the laptop under $1,000, so that's trash. But if you could in China or get someone to build it, right? You want something with fast clock speed. So if it's 3.8, 4.2, 4.0, .2, whatever. I've seen some in the fives and I lost my mind. But um, you get something with that clock. And if you can get more cores of that clock speed, cool, perfect. Then you're talking about memory and stuff. 16 gigabytes of memory is trash, but that's the standard. On Mac, if I had 16 gigabytes of memory, eight gigabytes is used according to this program here, uh, clean my Mac. I wish y'all could see it. I can't move it. But right now I have 40 gigabytes of memory, 20 gigabytes of my memory is being used by my system. So it's almost like any, whatever month, month number you throw at it, half of it's going to find a way to be eaten up. And then I have this thing that cleans it. So you have to be conscientious of that on Windows. I think the equivalent is called CCleaner. But anyway, so you want a lot of memory. So on a, on a laptop, you start getting laptops at 16 or better, your price went up again because we're talking about 32 at this point. So we're talking about 4.2 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes of RAM minimum. And then hopefully your solid state is dope. And today, in today's age, solid state is getting dead cheap. Like all these Samsungs that we're getting and throwing our MPs and external standalones are like $99 for half a terabyte, 140 for a whole terabyte, 300 for two or three terabytes. As long as that's the trend, that'll be the cheapest part of your setup. But those are the three things I'd worry about. And if your laptop supports a clock speed like that, it should have a motherboard that supports the L2 cache, which is responsible for reading that uh, Omnisphere patch. And I'm just using Omnisphere as an example because it's the most intense loading synth there is, I think, next to Contact and Serum. What's good, Michael Smith? The L buggy up in here. Boy, you crazy. What exactly are you looking for? Pro productivity, gaming school? Ba -ba 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 -da. Where am I? Yo, I'm in the matrix for real. I'm 30 minutes behind. Craftmaster says, you don't need the computer. You want it. Be patient and get the right tools or struggle with the wrong ones. Hey, factoid. But if you spend 800, you're still going to struggle. But what do I know? We don't know anything, bro. We're old heads. We're, we're washed up. Anyway, what's good? Bang it to X. Did I miss anyone in the chat? Did I not say hello to anybody? Salute to all of you. Raw tunes. I see you, fam. Sixteen gigabytes of RAM is trash for Omnisphere. Like, like I was explaining with this box, this this box is two gigabytes. So if you're just doing sample beats and you're starting here, fire, because there is no OS, there is no Internet Explorer, there's nothing running in the background. But if you add Serum or these air instruments, if these air instruments get out of pocket and they start going harder, then um, yeah, two gigabytes is gonna be trash. Sixteen is gonna be super trash, because. Is you're just gonna because you're gonna get 
it's it's kind of like the you know the frog in the boiling pot of water. You can get used to like opening and reaching for things, and then you're gonna realize you're always maxing out of the memory or the clock speed. You you gotta pay for one of them, um, even on your computer. You know what I mean? So you always run out under the designs that they give consumers when they're making cray computers the stuff they use at pixar the stuff that they use everywhere else doesn't have that limit but it has the same cost energy consumption so your electric bills through the fucking roof if you can get your hands on one of those computers and then your power company is like what are you doing you know what i mean so like it's always going to there's always an exchange of energy you know energies neither created or destroyed kind of thing it just transfers form so you get efficiency, it comes at a cost. And vice versa. The cheaper something is, the less efficient it is. Clock speed of RAM or common. More is better, but M there only comes with eight. Worked for me, yeah. If it worked for you, more power to you. I'm just telling you from a person that uses Omnisphere. Because if you can use Omnisphere, you know, painlessly, then everything else is going to work. I don't think you're using Omnisphere painlessly on 8 gigabytes of RAM. Faster RAM is better than more RAM, right? Um, yeah, you notice that in video cards. The speed is important. Yeah, you can say that. Salute Stout. What about if you get an external hard drive? Say a terabyte for song storage. That's what I'm doing. Still trash. You seen how long? Did you watch my backup videos? How long that took? Faster than it would have been on my old Windows computer. Not for nothing. Like I said, the boiling water, your frog, you get used to reaching for things. But just in the simple demonstration of moving stuff, um, you, you'll notice it because you'll be doing more. I mean, I cleared a whole folder out in an hour. That would have took a whole day before. So maybe it is better. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe let me rephrase. You're going to still notice the time it takes. So, um, if if you can afford internal storage inside of your your laptop, that would be ideal. I do not think most consumer laptops are putting USB C Thunderbolt ports on there without a premium. That may change by the summertime as it's becoming standardized as the new USB. What do you use to clean your Mac? I use something called Clean My Mac. <laughs> If you're looking for a laptop really powerful around 1K, check out the GL7, the R2D2 1000. Dr. Septum got the answer for you guys. Audio by Arson, what's good, fam? Ryzen 3000 series are coming out next year. Crazy cores, clocks, and price point. Yeah. We're, we're heading into a space age. We're heading into Star Wars soon. When we get into Star Wars, you ain't got to worry about none of this shit no more because we're not going to be using this technology. I think Apple kind of like showed their hand. When they said they're not doing Intel no more, they kind of told us. They kind of alerted us. They let us know what was up already. The Intel chip era is dead. That's all that is. So if you think a nice, new, exciting computer is coming out with an Intel chip, hold your horses. Buy the old ones. Buy the ones with the tough clock speeds that you can get on Newegg under a G. Wait till that new technology is announced. Trust me on it. They're not, they're, not, they're not doing the same thing no more. They're letting you code BIOS and all that bullshit. It's about to get crazy. Th these conversations, is like the last year we'll have them, I think. Hopefully. I hope I hope everyone follows suit. I hope Akai makes another NPC that uses it, too. Because that 2 gigabytes of RAM is funny. <laughs> if this had 16, I'd be like, that's not enough. Let's see what's up with the what's up though. I'm gonna keep y'all keep talking. I'm gonna just start cooking. What are we talking about? I'm gonna try to do an original beat. I got none but sample. Well, all but two are sample. They try to give us the little John Jupiter. Trash.
What are those bleeding edge beats that they're doing these days? They're bringing a lot of R&B chords back to like the trap stuff. I did it the hard way. The hard way. Even Kevin Gates and them. They're doing like this weird sevenths. They're doing the struggle Zaytoven joints. Like I wish Zaytoven would speak up on it. I'm tired of it too, Zay. I'm tired of it too, Zay. These are not polys. Those are for the win. <laughs> Those are for the win for real. I like how fast it changes though. Very efficient. They did a really good job with that. If I could catch that, that'd be nice. Keep that track. I'm gonna do a new track. And on my new track, I have a new program. And on my new program, I'm gonna sign some samples. I'm gonna browse some of my drum kits. I wanna trap it out though, kinda, maybe. Or maybe I can use the Masada joint. I think I can use the Masada's uh his cycles kit, which is his drum kit. That's very snappy and responsive. I want to see if it will work for the kind of track I'm trying to do though. Let's see. Oh, shit. I can do that. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny that that's what this is. I always wondered how to do that, like uh, in the box. I just never had the kits to do it. I never, my brain didn't even. Ah, oh, shit. He got the T minus. Because his drum kits also change samples and velocities, you just got the one finger T minus pause.
Plum shits is fire. Masada, you only gave us like eight though, bro. We need like 20 more. Let's relax. I need you to get on your job. I gotta change the sound. It's not even in the damn element anymore. I gotta go in a different bag, damn it. They changed your whole mood, the drum kit. Stay woke. In a whole different lane. It's so hard to keep it simple. I'm so used to playing like 11s. It's something uh my my bro Tommy D man like I seen him play so much like he'll play like chords that have you have more keys than you have fingers, and when he plays that way anything fits. <laughs> it's like you know how like we would get stuck on the scale. He doesn't get stuck on the scale. He like knows one chord that covers the whole damn thing. It's in that key right there. And then I could change it over here. Like, you'd be like, why is it 11 keys though? I only needed a triad. And then you ask him to do triads and he gets stuck. It's funny. But let's see.
cheesy baseline type shit but I'm gonna have to do a cheesy baseline type shit cause I have no idea what the I don't wanna turn everything to 13 so it fucks your melody up my midi my friend what is this I ran into an interesting situation it's not recording me no more or it is and I muted the track because I'm an idiot <laughs> it didn't show me the notes though now it shows me the notes how convenient is that Everything's so 
MG is struggling to struggle. When you too fired to struggle, y'all need to relax. Uh, God damn, I missed the whole chat, bro. I don't know where I was at. For some reason, I didn't get a notification from YouTube. Buy it, you love it. Drew, buddy just solved the memory issue though. Buy it. I was going to buy it, but I'm changing my mind after this video. I don't like the memory issues. Drew, what are you talking about? Drew. All your platforms are have memory issues. That's why you just resample it to pads. And then you you end up using your resamples or your pads as like clips, like Ableton Live Workflow. That's the best case scenario. Um, what you want is speed though. You want to be able to go through that process real quick and not forget your inspiration and move on to the next joint. And then what's cool about converting it to pads or samples is that you could chop it up. Like those boring chords I have right now, they're kind of like an R&B melodic thing. But if I start chopping them up, they become a rapping thing. So now I have an idea for a bridge or a change up. So working in wave or chops or samples, or whatever the nomenclature is within this box, is probably ideal. And that's how you keep it fast too. That's just me though. Yeah, and if you think this is bad, go back to those old days when they were using SP12 for real. Three second sample time total. Where are we at? Y'all trying to buy computers in the chat. Let me find out y'all got Newegg affiliate links popping up. I can make all these sounds in vacuum. Trevor, yes, this is exactly what these synths are. So think about how stupendous this is. You have the vacuum sound engine and a standalone NPC. I clown today's kids for watching other kids play with toys on YouTube, but here I am. What's good, Water Sonics? Is Reason a good alternative to FL Studio? Would you prefer the NPC by any reason? Would you prefer the X by any reason? Ella Alexis, would you? Are you saying, like, would it be better to get an X than a live? Is that your question, my friend? As long as I have to take my MPK Mini with me, which also still has pads, I don't care which NPC it is, as long as it's standalone. Basically, if your each chord is your scale, your melody could be any of the keys in the scale. Stay woke. My first chord is the entire scale. <laughs> That's why he does that. He's he's a trickster. Because that'd be the hardest thing. Like, ah, you're clashing with the harmony of the chords. Like, bitch, not if my chord's the whole scale. Stay woke. <laughs> MG 
any part of the skull, I can do that. do them all but no one's singing so I can't hear it if I could slide that that blue note they call it if you're fast enough
if I can remember that.
Easy money. Easy money. Awesome, but like, hey, congrats and blessings. Thank you for the info. Going to hit up that MG's 43 hour live stream. It's hard to break from these streams. <laughs> nah, you can. <laughs> you funny money. Good. What's good, everybody, my friend? 36 years young next month. May the universe bless my youth. It is, I went into a different scale. Or was, it's not at the moment. He's the prophet of the dry person, be the first to be Did you watch Samurai Shampoo already? It has amazing music from New Habits. Caribou, yeah. I watched Samurai Shampoo when it first came out before they dubbed it. And then I noticed the lo-fi hip hop there. And I noticed the beat culture in Japan as a result of that. And it stuck with me all through 2012 and on and on before we start putting names on it and people start misidentifying it as Jay Dilla <laughs> and hip hop per se. It's a whole different culture. It's a spinoff culture. We're, we're just putting the Starbucks back in our hood. Would you prefer the NPC by any reason? Uh, I don't think you ever clarified that, Alexis. Knox said, I, MG in the building. I'm older than everyone here. Hey. You live in Israel or are you in the U.S.? Stav. Oh, he's in Israel. Everything makes sense now. I had the expert returned it. Nice love the live production said Later, guys, I'm out. Scantless Beats. Thanks for chiming in. First time seeing you, my friend. Have a good day. Quincy Jones made tight beats. I need y'all to relax. He would think Frank Sinatra, though. We already know what that's about. What up, family? Hope everyone good. Wilmer Ventura, Mika Moon, what's good? It's got your freestyling? You got to type out some bars in so I can steal them. Dope vibe. Damn, I feel like I'm a baby. I'm only 28. TB Anderson said not really to something, my friend. You talk about the type beats? Yeah. Dope vibe. Not squared no, all, man. R. Williams said yes. That Cowboy EP is classic. What's good, Joe, for show? Sure? Everyone's bumping in at the end of the stream. Y'all be bugging, bro. <laughs> Let's turn this shit down. Oh, if we only had sidechain. that a lot danger hands will do the same thing i just did and i think i did that subconsciously because he's the one that really taught that like using the real trap kits like trap drums like a trap drum set not a trap dirty self trap but they you know, kick the center of the hi-hat in your room and then put it with your real drums that's all danger in them did that's why it bounces so much let me take this call Year? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Hold on, give me one second. I'll be back after these messages. 